Many years ago, in a faraway country, in the Russian flatlands, lived a cobbler named Martin. It was December 23rd, two days before Christmas. In those days, the town was completely covered with snow. All the houses had been there for a long time. Not even the elders remembered who had built them. They were all white with snow. Martin had always lived in one of those houses. During his life, he had repaired many shoes, beautiful and ugly ones, shoes for rich people and poor people. From his little window which looked out on the street, he saw many shoes pass by. He knew who the people were by the type of shoes they wore. Rich and elegant shoes, army boots, business shoes, ladies shoes and so on. Some time ago, while putting his tools together, he found a book that spoke of Jesus. In his moments of rest, Martin read it. He was struck by the things written there. That day he read, I came to your house, but you did not welcome me. Martin thought, but I too am like those people. I too think only of myself. What do I do for others? But even if Jesus did come today, what could I do for him? Thinking like this, Martin fell asleep. Martin, Martin, a voice said. But the cobbler kept sleeping. Martin, the voice repeated. Tomorrow I will come to see you. This time, Martin woke up in a fright. He went to open the door. Who is it? Who spoke? Who was it? But then he realized that it might have been Jesus speaking to him, saying he would come to see him. The next day, Martin started tidying his shop early. Right away he lit the fireplace and he made some tea because it was very cold out. Then while he worked, he looked out the window often. Jesus could come in any moment, he thought. As time went by, Martin noticed a woman with a baby in her arms outside, next to the building across the street, trying to keep out of the wind. Martin thought to himself, that baby must be very cold. So he went out and called the lady. Madam, come here. Come inside. Come in. The woman slowly came close. Martin invited her to come inside and he showed her the place closest to the fire. I don't want to bother, she said. My train leaves only in two hours and I don't know anyone in this town to take me in. Would you like some tea, said Martin? You'll see, you'll feel better. Perhaps some milk for the baby, she replied. He didn't eat anything this morning. The two hours went by fast while the fire warmed their faces, so the time to leave came quick. Thanks for the warmth you gave us. Thank you for keeping me company. If you ever come this way again, come to visit me at my shop. Best wishes, said Martin, who stayed for a moment to watch them walk away. Martin had not yet returned to work when the door opened abruptly. Listen, are my shoes ready? No, I'm sorry. Why not? I can't waste my time, you know. You just brought them in. You're not afraid to argue with me here in this rat hole. You will never have the pleasure of seeing me again. And the man left the shop angry, slamming the door behind him. But a gust of wind carried Martin's last words to him. Merry Christmas. Outside the man stopped in his track. He thought for a moment. 
Then he turned back and came in the door of Martin's shop. I'm sorry, I was really rude. You instead are the first person to wish me Merry Christmas. Thanks, and Merry Christmas to you, Martin. The man went away happy. Christmas had come for him too. In the meantime, Martin noticed an old man carrying a basket of apples in the street. He stopped next to the shop to rest. A boy suddenly jumped out, grabbed an apple and ran away. But the old man grabbed him by the arm. Stop! Stop! I'll take you to the police, you thief! You'll be punished good! Martin, who had seen everything, was out in a flash. Hey! Easy, easy! He is not a thief! He's probably just a little hungry, I'm sure. But he stole. Yes, but hunger is like sleep. You cannot control it. I'm sure you would not bring a child to the police if he were sleeping in the street. Of course not. Exactly. Soon it will be Christmas, and no one should be sad. One look from Martin, and the apple slid from the boy's hand back into the basket. No, keep it. It's my gift to you. I can take it, really? Can I? Yes, of course. Didn't I say so? said the old man with a smile. Here, help me carry this basket. And together the boy and the old man went on down the street. Martin instead returned to his work, always waiting for someone to show up. Soon after, Martin saw two children pass by in front of his window. They're my friends, he thought, and right away he went to open the door. Hey! Come over here. Why the faces? You look sad. It's Christmas. The two children looked down and answered. We didn't even get one gift. But it's still early. The gifts under the Christmas tree will come after midnight, said Martin. But we don't even have a tree. How is it possible? Our family is poor. We're lucky if we find something to eat. Wait for me here. I'll be right back. Martin ran inside the shop, opened the old trunk where he dug up old shoes, pieces of leather, tools, rope, suspenders chewed by mice, and finally a wooden train. He looked some more, and with his hands full of toys, he shouted to the children waiting outside the door, Come, come help! I can't open the door! The two children, seeing him like this, didn't know whether to laugh or cry. These are for you! Thank you! Thanks so much! But now go home. Soon the bells will ring and it will be Christmas. He stayed at the door waving while the children ran off, full of joy. Martin began to get impatient and frequently looked outside. Jesus, his long-awaited guest, was nowhere in sight. At the door of the shop stepped in Stephen instead, the chimney sweep. Are my shoes ready? They're ready. But why the face? What's wrong? Don't you see? I'm all black and I forgot my clean clothes at home. It is too far to get them and come back in time. Would you want to go visit a friend all messed up like this? I don't. And it had to happen tonight. Wait, said Martin. He pulled out a brand new brush and with it he made all the coal dust disappear from Stephen's clothes. Come over this way and wash your face. There. Now you can even go see the mayor. Thanks, Martin. I hope Christmas brings you as much joy as you gave me tonight. By now the whole day had gone by and Martin had not even noticed how quickly it went. Other days it seemed that it was never ending and the time went so slowly as he sat in front of all the shoes to be repaired. But today he stopped his work many times because each person made him hope for Jesus' coming. But it was late by now and no one else was coming. People were home eating their meal 
and in a while they would all gather to celebrate. Martin kept hoping deep down in his heart that someone would still come. He listened carefully to hear even the slightest sound of footsteps, but nothing. In that very moment, from inside the room, he heard a whisper, Martin, Martin, it is I. It was Stephen's voice, who appeared like a shadow, all wrapped in light, and then disappeared. It is I. 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 All of a sudden, Martin felt a great joy inside, and he felt pushed to open the book. He was amazed to read, I was hungry, and you gave me food, thirsty, and you gave me drink, and again, whatever you've done to the least of my brothers and sisters, you've done it to me. Just in that moment, the bells began to ring. It was midnight. Jesus really did come to see me. Now I understand that when I love my neighbor, I love him.